Hi, I'm Einat Rubian Seibold. I'm a the SEO product lead here at Wix, which means I build here uh, all the SEO product for our customers, for our users, in order to promote the website. Um, I started with my way as an SEO. I was a director of uh, organic search in a big agency uh, for like six or seven years. And then uh, through the SEO, I found the product world. I fell in love in product and then I moved to do product. And here in Wix, I get to do, uh, to combine both of my loves, SEO and uh, product. So today I'm gonna talk with you about, um, uh, about SEO, but not a classic SEO, not what is SEO, which I'm sure you know, but I wanna show you um, I, I, will, I want to show you the opportunities that, that await for you on Google search result page and how can you use it for your benefits. So we will talk about a bit about how uh, understanding how search engine works. And then we will talk about the opportunities in search results. I will try to show you what, is, what exists, why you should do it and how you should do it. Uh, and at the end I will show you about a few new tools and features that we released that will really make your life easier. So let's start with first understanding search engines. So how does Google work, Google crawl, Google and every other search engine that you work with? So each search engine has a bot types. There's a bot for mobile, bot for desktop, bot for images, bot for videos, for news, and many more. The way that they are working is that they first, they crawl the website, they will go through your internal linking, your sitemaps, and they will see the relation between the pages. They can kind of read the content and understand what your site is about. Once they crawl, they move to index your pages. So there's a phase between crawling and indexing. One, once uh, Google or the, the search engine index your site, it can appear in search results accordingly to what Google understood that your site is about and the ranking that you should get. So you, sh you should remember and you should know that there may be a time that your site will be crawled but not indexed yet, and it takes some time, a bit of time. So this is how it works. What we also need to know about the bots they call pages with HTML code. This is the best uh, thing for them. This is how they know. But they don't do, they don't click on buttons. They don't scroll pages. They're not over over element and they don't fill forms. So in other words, what you need to do, everything that you want to be indexed, every textual or content or visual element that you want to be indexed has to be part of the page HTML. Another thing that Google uh, doesn't like, the bots doesn't like is bad performance. If your site is loading slowly, it will affect your ranking. So it's better to, um, uh, to have a light and a very fast loading site. You should know that by working on Wix platform, your sites are already um, uh, extremely um, uh, optimized in terms of performance. Wix is really like um, uh, improved in the last years in the, uh, in the performance and one of the leading CMS in this type. Another thing that we should remember, and I will go back to it every time uh, in the presentation, is the mobile, the ver mobile versus desktop. Let's talk about mobile first. I guess some of you probably heard about it. Mobile first is a, in the last uh, years, it's a term that uh, you hear more and more because most of the traffic, most of the search traffic these days come from uh, mobile. More than 60% will, will come from mobile. Users are not only searching in mobile, they will purchase through the mobile, everything happens kind of through the mobile. That's why um, Google will index first the mobile version of your site. So you need to make sure that the mobile version of your site is optimized um, according to what you want to be indexed. So you need to pay attention that every important element, especially content or any information should be fully available in the mobile version of your site. I attached here in the link, uh, um, uh, like the Google mobile friendly test, you can test your site and see um, how friendly it is in the eyes of Google. Now let's deep dive to the anatomy of the search result. What we will talk about is, first of all, not all organic results are created equal, and this is good because we can use it. Uh, we will talk again about mobile versus desktop and what you need to pay attention, and then we will talk about uh, SERP features. Uh, we will go over a few categories. The paid features, which is not organic but important to talk about. Navigation uh, features, uh, features with organic opportunities, some that are without organic opportunities, and in the end we will talk about uh, local features and knowledge graph. So first, let's talk about what is not all organic results that are created equal. Look at the image that I attached here. You can see here there's a lot of different version of a search result. You see that there's images, there's video, there's some result with link and some result with like kind of a question that a kind of accordion that opens up. Those are all SERP features. Those are rich results. Um, what, what is good about a rich result? They take, um, they may take more space. 
they attract the eye, so you may get a higher CTR. And sometimes it could, benefic could be beneficial for you in the ranking. I put it like in a, I, I will talk about it and explain you what do I do I mean. Um, how you get rich results? Content with the matching intent. If you write the content accordingly to the intent uh, of the rich result type, you can get, you can be eligible for this. And structured data. Structured data is a code that helps Google or search engine understand what it is. And I will show you also, we will talk about it uh, briefly. So let's talk about mobile versus desktop. What we need to remember always when you build your organic strategy is that the mobile SERP is different than the desktop SERP. First of all, due to the limited space in mobile, search features like what I showed you before, you know, the one with the images and stuff like this, will cover the entire fold easily. So it means that the organic result will be under the fold. So you may get less traffic. Uh, in mobile, user intent might be different than in mobile, and some features are only available on mobile or have abilities on mobile. For example, on mobile, you can have click to call. So it's different, and you, you need to pay attention to it when you build your uh, SEO strategy. Um, it may affect your ranking, so maybe in mobile your ranking will be different than in desktop, and even if it's the same ranking, you may get less traffic uh, in mobile. So always monitor both SERPs, mobile and desktop. Now let's talk about the categories that we talked about. So first, let's talk about the paid SERP features. It's not organic, but it's important for us to understand and to acknowledge that they exist. So what is the paid serve features? It's the paid results. You can see that now it's, it's very seamlessly, it looks very much like the organic result, but the only dis difference is the little ad type that you see uh, over there. That means that it's paid and not organic. They come in a large variety of uh, ad types, also like we showed in the organic. And mostly they will be the first thing that user will see because they appear most of the time, they appear on top of the page, but also in different places. Um, they also have different features, um, and it varies between desktop and mobile. They can have a, an image or a click to call or stuff like this. There's different type, and one important to pay attention to it is the PLA, the product listing ads. If you can see it in the images, it's a large, it shows mostly on the top, large component with the images, ranking, prices. Sometimes it will appear also on the right side. Uh, it takes a lot of attention from the users and therefore a lot of traffic. Um, so you need to take, to take this in consideration when you build your organic strategy, when you're trying to rank for something. Not to say that you won't get organic traffic, you will, but maybe less uh, because those uh, kind of results appear there. And another thing about SERP features, they uh, appear in different placement on the SERP, mostly on top, could be on the right like we saw in the PLA, sometimes on the bottom. We always need to, take, to pay attention to, uh, that they exist and how we deal it, with it. Let's talk about navigational features. Um, so there's all kinds of navigational features that uh, Google creates in order to help the users find uh, exactly what they want, like kind of refine their search uh, and to get the user the, the, the best results. So first of all, the, there's the disambiguation box, uh, like you see here, here I search for the rangers. Uh, Google tried to help me and understand which rangers have I looked for. Uh, did I mean the New York rangers or the Texas rangers? So this little box will appear here. Every time I will click on each one of them, I will get to a new uh, search result uh, according to this query. Another uh, navigational feature is the related searches. Related searches usually appears on the bottom of the page, maybe like those bubbles uh, uh, at the bottom, sometimes with the images, and they're also trying to help you find your search and get to the best result that you were looking for. Another one is like people also search for. You see, it's a, I search for something. Google will show me what other people search in this kind of in this subject and try to help me and find what I was looking for. We cannot affect those features, kind of. It's something that just exists that Google does. It doesn't. It won't probably won't bring us a lot of traffic. But let's talk about what we can affect: uh, features with organic opportunities. So first of all, what do I mean when I say features with organic opportunities? Uh, what I mean is a result that include a URL, uh, the URL that would lead to your site, or maybe to some another digital property that you have, like YouTube channel, social media, uh, etc. Let's talk about rich results and structured data. So first of all, what is structured data? Structured data markup is a piece of code that you can add to your web page and uh, provide a search engine with, with details about what it is, what this page is about, what is it, it, it includes. 
Um, search engines like Google can use those mockups and create results, create rich results. They understand better what, what I see here, and then it will create the relevant rich results. What you should know is by default, when you use VIX, you already have those uh, structured data, those markups predefined for you. For example, if you have a product page, if you have a store with a product page, we already predefined for you the structured data. It exists there. There's nothing that you need to do. It's already set, and you will be eligible to get product uh, uh, rich results. However, we believe in fully customization. So if you want to change it, if you want to add it, you can do it easily, and I will show you later on how we do it in the platform itself. So let's talk about different type of rich results. There's tons of rich results. I won't show you everything, but I want to show you like a glimpse of what exists so you will know what you can do and uh, explore it even more. So I guess like the most common one is the rich result with images and rating. Um, you see there's uh, images, there's rating. It usually will appear, uh, for example, for uh, products, for a uh, recipe site, stuff like this. What you need to pay attention is like when you build your organic strategy and you want to rank for something, look for this keyword in the SERP and see what the SERP is about. If all the results are with, like this, with rich results, with images and with rating, maybe you should take a, do it as well. Or if none of them are with uh, images and rating, maybe you should do it so you will stand up. Um, another cool rich results um, that appears is the feature snippet. Some uh, may call it uh, the zero result or the open result. Uh, I like it a lot because you can really affect it and you can really kind of beat the ranking. Uh, what I mean is it's a, it's a snippet of content from your own website that appears on top of the results, which means you, are, you appear even before uh, the ranking number one in the, in the organic result, which is amazing. So what, how do you get it? There's a lot of ways how to get it, of course. Uh, but usually what you see here, it can appear in the list or uh, just a piece of in information. Those are websites that appear that are ranked in the, the, the first page, but sometimes they can be ranked in the lower part of the first page. But because their content is written exactly for the intent of the user, for what the user is searching for, and they use structured data in the right way, Google finds it very, very re relevant for what the user search for, and will show you a snippet of your website really on the top. So you kind of beat the, the ranking game, especially in the very competitive uh, arenas. It's amazing. You need to write your content according to search results. You see, sometimes it will be mostly on questions or things that you can provide answers. So write your content accordingly to this, use structured data, and you can be eligible for a result like this that will bring you lots of traffic. Another uh, interesting feature is that people also ask. It's this little accordion. Usually it's four boxes of questions that you can uh, uh, enlarge, and you will see, again, a snippet of, a, of an answer uh, with a link to the site, to the relevant site that uh, appears there. Um, again, write your content accordingly to, to intent, to questions like this, and you may appear in this kind of feature. Uh, the fun fact is that when you open one of these, um, there will, will appear more questions uh, similar to this. Another rich result that is interesting is the search bar. So if, uh, if user will look for the search bar, you will get a result to your website. Another way to get more traffic uh, uh, and catch more intents of the users is, will appear mostly on brand searches. Um, you should also know that uh, if you are using uh, the Wix search app, you automatically uh, get this markup, uh, the site, uh, citing search box markup uh, to your website. So you're automatically eligible for something like this. As I mentioned, in Wix, you get a lot of predefined markups, and you can edit everything. The markups appear under SEO settings, and you can uh, look, uh, for example, here in, I went to the product pages. This is the markup for product pages. It takes all the information out of your website. You don't need to write any code. It's already there for you. If you want to add it, you can uh, um, uh, customize it and add it and add other features maybe that doesn't appear here. And you can also add any custom structured data that you want to Wix pages per page or in SEO setting per page type. You can do whatever you want in order to maximize your uh, rich result uh, um, data. I added here some links for, first of all, for structured data generator if you want to create your own uh, structured data. Uh, I added a link for Google rich result testing if you want to test how Google sees your rich results. And of course, there's some articles about it that you can uh, learn and uh, enlarge your knowledge about rich results, which is very cool. Um, we talked about all organic opportunities that bring traffic to your website, but there's a lot of organic opportunities that will bring traffic to your other assets, which is also 
very important. If you build a, a, the right organic strategy, if you build it holistically, you will have other assets and you want all of them to connect and talk together. For example, there's the videos uh, in SERP, you see, the, you see a snippet of the video, a bit of text, and a link, mostly for if it's a YouTube, then it will be a link to your YouTube channel. Um, and this could also bring you lots of traffic to your assets. Videos can appear also on brand uh, search searches. So if you maintain an active YouTube channel, you can get this kind of carousel with all your YouTube. You can control your narrative uh, of the brand. Social media incept. If you, for example, tweet a lot, you may appear um, um, like this. You can get a carousel with, your, with tweets or any other social media um, can appear like this. Images. This is very important. It is like kind of rising a uh, topic these days, uh, the visual search. Images is another kind of search engine. I mentioned before that there's a bot for images as well. So if you optimize your images accordingly, if you write like, for example, alt text, if you use um, the right tags, Google understands the surrounding around the images. So also when users are looking for images, they can get uh, to an image from your site and you will get more traffic through that. Um, so those were organic opportunities that um, uh, features that has organic opportunities, you should use them according to what your website is about and what you're talking about. There are some uh, non-organic opportunities, uh, but it's also important to, uh, to know them. For example, direct answers. I ask here, how old is Brad Pitt? Google knows this for sure. He knows what I meant, he knows the answer, and he gives me the answer automatically. So there's no need for the user to enter another website and read more, because he already got a question, the answer for it, right? So we can affect it. But we should know that if I'm building a, a, a strategy and I want to rank for something like this, I should know that this is what will appear. So maybe it's not worth um, to, to put my effort over there. Direct answers could be on a various of uh, things. It could be weather forecasts, sports scores, um, uh, um, war definition, flight information, all kinds of things like this. Always check the SERP before you decide what you want to promote. Now let's talk about the last uh, category that we talk about is the local features and the knowledge graph, which is important if you're a local business. You need to pay attention for this. So this is what we call the local pack, the near me things. So um, um, it's, this will appear usually for searches by location or local businesses, or if I look for something near me, this will appear like this kind of uh, cards of local businesses and, um, um, and a map. So it will appear for things like uh, if I will look for Italian near me, so Google knows that I'm not looking for Italian men, right? I'm looking for a restaurant. He will notice and he will show me the local restaurants, Italian restaurant around me. Uh, so this is important to pay attention, especially when you have a local uh, uh, business. Most of this information here comes from Google business profile. So if you maintain a Google business profile, you have higher chances to appear here and it's very important. So it's very recommended if you, have, you are a local business, open a Google business profile uh, so you can appear in searches like this. You should know that you can manage all your Google business profile from within the Wix platform. Um, uh, you can um, verify, verify your business here. You can look at stats and reviews and everything right from the platform itself. Of course, you can do it also from Google, whatever you find more comfortable. Um, so let's talk about the local packs and the knowledge graph, how it connects. So the local packs was those little cards that I show you, if I click on one of those cards, I will see like a graph here with a lot of more information uh, about my business. It could be business hours, uh, rating, images, everything that Google's know about this entity. Google has a way of understanding an entity. He takes information from everywhere and he builds this kind of entity. So if it's a, a, a business, he will know all the information about this business. If it's a company, he will know this, uh, this entity. Uh, and it will show all this data. It could appear also a link. Um, most of the time it will be for Wikipedia. Sometimes it will be for your website itself. So the knowledge graph uh, appears for different kinds of queries. So for, first of all, there's the local knowledge panel, which we talked about. Um, and it will show everything about, that he knows about your restaurant. Like I say, it could be rating, opening hours, everything that he knows. Um, on desktop, it will usually appear on the right. And mobile, I will show you where it will appear. There's a knowledge graph for TV shows, for celebrities, for almost everything uh, that Google has information about. Uh, in mobile, uh, like we said, we always have to, to monitor the mobile SERP. 
In mobile, it will appear on the top. So it means that it will push down all the organic results, which we also need to pay attention to because maybe we'll get less traffic. So let's summarize everything that we went over here. Um, we went on different type of uh, structured data and how you can build your uh, uh, structured data um, uh, pages and how you can um, combine it in your organic strategy. Um, what you always need to remember is Google uh, search results is keep on evolving and changing constantly, so you need to stay updated. You can use the uh, Wix Learning Hub, I will show you uh, soon. Everything will be updated over there if you want to um, educate yourself about SEO and the new changes in the world. Uh, so you always have to adjust your kind of your strategy and, uh, and adjust to the new things that Google offers. Always monitor your site rank on desktop and on mobile because it, it may differ. Uh, build your content strategy based on search opportunities and search as intent so you may get all those uh, amazing results that we uh, spoke about. Um, and keep in mind the search features and how they can affect your CTR um, when you build your strategy. So now let's talk about some new features uh, that we likely released. So first of all, I want to speak about the Wix site inspection. What you see here is a tool that uh, works with Google uh, inspecting a URL. And here with a click of a button, you can scan your old site, inspect your old site and see the, the index status, how Google sees your pages. That, that's how you can uh, identify if you have issues. If some of your pages are non-indexed and you want them to be indexed and uh, fix those things. You also have a highlight version to see like an overview of your site index status. It's very, very, and beneficial uh, when you're working on sites. Another cool uh, integration that we did lately is the SEMrush integration. Um, we, SEMrush is a research tool, a, a keyword research tool, a competitor uh, research tool. They offer lots of abilities. We integrated with the keyword research uh, tools. So right now within Wix platform in the SEO checkup checklist, you can already co conduct your keyword research. You can search for your keywords, see what uh, you will see related keywords, and you can choose the best keywords for you, and this will automatically be integrated in your checklist. Um, like I mentioned uh, throughout this presentation, structured data uh, is part of uh, our automatically predefined uh, definition. So we added here uh, local business structured data. If your site is, is a local business and you update your address, locally address, you will uh, get automatically the local business structure data. There's here the site link search box that I mentioned before, all predefined for you. Uh, like I mentioned, you can add structure data to custom pages. Each page has a different, it could have a different structure data if you want. Everything is fully customizable. Auto redirect. Uh, this is a very, very important feature that uh, we added. If you change a URL, if you change the slug of a page and you didn't do a redirect, you kind of lost all your SEO power. Um, it means that users uh, that uh, will go back to the old URL will get 404. Google knows your old URL and will get to a 404. No one will transfer to your new page, so you kind of need to start over. It's very important that when you change a URL, you will do a 301 redirect to the new URL. Up until now, you had to do it manually. Most of the people didn't know that they even need to do it or how to do it. So what we did is we created auto automatically redirect. Once you change a slug, we will show you this kind of uh, box with a toggle or with a checkbox in the editor uh, that will say that we will automatically redirect this, this uh, old page to the new page for you. Of course, you can uh, uh, turn it off if you don't want to, but it's highly recommended. And I know uh, for a fact that it saved lots of for, for, uh, errors for our users. Um, another cool feature that is right now rolling out is the SEO uh, settings edit uh, by, by page type. Apparently now in the SEO settings, you could edit like the main definitions for the page type. Like all your product pages will have this structure for the title, for example. So now we added another tab, which is the edit by, uh, for example, by product page. And you will see here a table of all your product pages all at once. So first of all, this is all, the first thing that you didn't have until now. You can see everything in one place, all your meta tags, and you can edit each one of them. Uh, you will have this panel. If you click on each one of them, the panel that you already know will open and you can edit all your SEO meta tags and optimize it accordingly. So it will save you a lot of time and make the editing and optimization much easier. Um, another uh, thing that is very important for us is uh, the SEO dashboard um, that is rolling out also uh, right now. 
this is, will be the right, the one place uh, to go when you want to know everything about SEO, how your site is doing, what you need to do next. Everything will appear here. Uh, it's what used to be the SEO tools that you, that you know. Now it will be called the SEO, the SEO, and it will have the SEO tools like you know. But also data from Google Search Console about your site performance. It will have here an educational uh, widget uh, that will have um, a specific content uh, that fits your, uh, your needs. And you can educate yourself a bit more about this. So this is uh, very cool and it's coming up. And I can tell you already that there's a lot of planning around it. So there will be a lot of cool things that will be added as we go. Um, and if you want to learn more about what I said and everything else about Wix SEO, you have the complete SEO guide uh, in this link. It's everything about Wix SEO, all our tools, all our abilities. You can, you can always go back to it. It will always be updated so you will know what exists for you. Um, another uh, important thing is the SEO Learning Hub. It's a new hub that we launched uh, recently with all the information you need to know about SEO, not only about Wix, but if you want to learn SEO, go there. There's amazing content over there. There's also a podcast um, um, that is really interesting. Just browse around and you will see everything. Uh, so that's it. Thank you very much. I really enjoyed having this conversation. Um, I, we have here the QR code, so if you want to leave a feedback, we will appreciate the feedback. Just scan this QR and give us a feedback about uh, how it was, uh, comments, everything. Thank you very much.